Okay, in this video, we're going to review geometric series and how you might see it on the BC calculus exam. And so let's just kind of get started. So um, first, you really need to know what they look like. So they look basically like uh, the sum from some number to infinity of a times r to the n or um, the sum from num some number to infinity of a times r to the n minus one it could actually be um, r to the n minus anything. Um, so kind of watch out for just the general form. So these are always going to have a sum um, as long as the absolute value of r is less than 1. So that's a really important idea that you can only get a sum if the absolute value of r is less than 1 because they're going to try to trick you and give you um, r's whose absolute value are greater than 1. Um, so watch out for that. When they do have a sum, they're going to sum up to uh, the first term over 1 minus the ratio. So the first term is going to be determined by taking that number that you start with and basically plugging it in. So we're going to look at that. So let's do a couple of examples. So we have the sum from 0 to infinity of 3 times the quantity negative 4 fifths to the n. So the first thing you want to do is recognize that it's geometric and then decide in your mind does it even converge. So um, we look at this and we say the absolute value of negative 4 fifths is less than 1. And since that's true, it definitely converges. So now we're just going to write the sum. So the sum is, we need to find the first term. So you look at this number down here, it says 0. Uh, you take 0, you plug it in, you just get 3. So it's the first term is 3 over 1 minus. And now you need to substitute in r. And r in this case is negative 4 fifths. So it carries that negative sign with it. And then we can simplify this, get 15 ninths, which is the same as 5 thirds. Um, let's take a look at another one. So this is actually a common type um, it's the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of the quantity e over pi to the n. So sometimes you'll see um, irrational numbers, uh, transcendental numbers, uh, things in there that you have to really think about to make sure that r is actually uh, in the range we need. So let's think about that. So we're looking at r. We know that e is less than pi. That's a really good fact to carry with you all the time. Um, and since that's the case, that means that e divided by pi is definitely less than 1, which means there is a sum. So we're going to find it. So this equals, we've got to find the first term. So in this case, n starts at 2. So we take 2 and we plug it in, and we get a first term of e over pi squared. And then that's going to be over 1 minus. And then r, in this case, is e over pi. And then uh, maybe you could just leave that if it's on the FRQ. If not, it might be multiple choice, and you have to kind of match it. Um, that simplifies to this. OK, let's look at another that's like this. Um, so we want to go from 1 to infinity of the quantity radical 7 over the sine of 1 to the n minus 1. So this is a very weird ratio. So uh, I would start thinking about this just uh, looking at the sine of 1. So 1 radian is in the first quadrant, which means sine is positive, um, and sine is always less than 1. So uh, we're going to say that this is definitely less than or equal to 1, but I know it's not sine of pi over 2. So um, that value is between 0 and 1 which means that I definitely know um, that the ratio, which is radical 7 over sine of 1, is going to be uh, greater than 1. And if that's the case, then I can say that this thing diverges. OK, so you might see these sorts of things in the multiple choice, um, where you just have to actually find the sum or determine which of the following series converge or diverge, um, that kind of thing. So let's move on and look at the next type of thing we might deal with. So say we are just, instead of given a summation, we're given the terms all written out. So with these, you want to recognize that it's geometric. Um, so I think this is geometric, so I'm going to check. So I'm going to find r by dividing consecutive terms. So I'm doing uh, the second term divided by the first term. When I simplify that, I get negative 2 thirds. And now what you want to do is you want to check a few of them. So make sure that if you do 1 third times uh, negative 2 thirds, you get negative 2 ninths. That works. Negative 2 ninths times negative 2 thirds gives you 4 over 27. Uh, 4 over 27 times negative 2 thirds gives you negative 8 over 81. So you got r correct, because if you start with the wrong r, just it's not going to work. Um, so I know that this is going to work out. I know that the absolute value of negative 2 thirds is less than 1. So it has a sum. So let's find it. So I need the first term, which is literally just sitting there. So that's my first term, over 1 minus the ratio that I found. And then you can simplify that to 1 fifth. And let's look at another one that's basically the same but looks very different. So we have x cubed plus 3x to the 5th plus 9x to the 7th plus 27x to the 9th um, plus dot dot dot. 
So I'm thinking this is also geometric. So what I'm gonna do is figure out r by dividing consecutive terms. So three x to the fifth divided by x cubed gives me um, three x squared. And then you wanna check again. So three x to the fifth times three x squared is nine x to the seventh. Multiply that by three x squared and you do get 27 x to the ninth. Um, so it's working. So our sum is going to be the first term, which is just the first term over one minus the ratio. So the ratio is three x squared. So we get a function in this case instead of a value, and that's good. But now we gotta ask ourselves, for what values of x is this valid? So I know that I need the absolute value of r to be less than one, which in this case means that uh, the absolute value of x squared has to be less than one third. And that means that x squared, since x squared is always positive, I can just drop the absolute values. I need this to be true. Um, so I can just solve x squared equals one third. And then I usually think about the graph. So I get x is equal to plus or minus uh, one over radical three. And then the graph kind of looks like this. And if I put in um, my line there at one third, um, those are the intersection points. So the interval is this between part because I want to know where x squared is less than that. Um, so I can fill in uh, between negative one over radical three and one over radical three. All right, so that's another way that you'll see these sorts of things. Um, you might see geometric series involved with comparisons. So you'll be given a series that you maybe don't know right offhand if it converges or diverges. So for example, does the sum from one to infinity of one over n times the quantity three sevenths to the n converge? Um, so I look at that and I think immediately, yes, it definitely does. And the way that I know that is that that three over seven to the n looks very geometric. So I'm gonna start off with this inequality. Uh, zero is greater than, uh, is less than uh, the one over n, three sevenths of the n, which is less than three sevenths of the n. So since that's true, I know that the summations will also follow that inequality. And from there, I know that uh, three sevenths is less than one, kind of obviously, uh, which means that the sum from one to infinity of three sevenths of the n converges. And I basically just use the direct comparison test so now I know that uh, the given series converges by direct comparison. So you might end up using uh, geometric series there very frequently. Sometimes you'll use p-series there as well. Um, hopefully you're familiar with those since you're reviewing for the exam. Uh, you'll use geometric series to find a new series from an old series. So the way that this comes up is we take advantage of the fact that our geometric series from zero to infinity of x to the n is just one plus x plus x squared plus dot 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 plus x to the n. And then we know that a geometric series sums up to the first term over one minus the ratio, which is one over one minus x, as long as the absolute value of x is less than one. So that means we can write all kinds of series. So for example, maybe we wanna write two x squared over one plus x squared as a series. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, rewrite this a little bit and kind of colorize it. So we've got our first term over one minus the ratio, so that plus in the denominator there, we had to change into minus a negative. Um, but now we're kind of good to go. So I'm gonna think of this as um, two x squared and then times just the geometric series with negative x squared plugged in. So every x in that series above, I replace with negative x squared. Now I'm gonna go through and clean this up, which gives me this, and I stop before that general term. So the way that I do this is I look at it as negative one to the n, and then x squared to the n, which x to the two n. Um, so I'll rewrite it like this. I do that pretty much because when you're using the ratio test for other things, it's just easier if they look like that. Um, but I think it's good practice. And you'll see on the AP exam that they're usually written that way. Um, and now I'm just gonna distribute two x squared to everything. And I'm gonna stop before the nth term again. Um, and so here I'm gonna write it as negative one to the n times two times x to the two n plus two, because when you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. Um, so that's our new series, but we didn't figure out um, what values of x will work. So we have to go back to uh, the absolute value of r should be less than one. Um, but if you've done enough of these at this point, you kind of just uh, in your mind automatically know that this means that you're between negative one and one. So that's actually the interval of convergence. Geometric series will never converge at the end points of the interval. So you don't even need to test them as long as you're working with a geometric. Um, so let's summarize what you'll see. So 
Geometric series are very common. Uh, it might be the most common type of series that you have to deal with, which is really nice because they're not super difficult. So you might see them on the multiple choice. Um, you'll get questions like, which of the following series converge? And it's one, one, two, one, two, three, that kind of thing. Um, find the actual sum. And then you definitely want to look out for R, make sure that it's uh, the absolute value is less than one. Um, which of the following series could be used to direct compare or something like that? Um, and one of the choices might be geometric. Uh, that's not uncommon. On the FRQs, all kinds of things. So maybe find a sum, uh, find a new series from an old series. Uh, when you actually uh, find the uh, interval of convergence, and then you have to test the endpoints, frequently one of them will be uh, geometric, and then the other one will be like an alternating series or a P series or something like that. Um, and there could just be all kinds of other things. Uh, I tried to cover everything. Uh, but who knows? So you just got to do lots of practice problems. And I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck.